Okay, my name is Aziz, A-Z-I-Z, -Z, Abu Baker, A-B-O-O-B-A-K-E-R. So as a kid, I had absolutely no interest at all in science. Um, I think I enjoyed watching Star Wars and Star Trek and things like that, like science fiction stuff. Uh, I was obsessive about Star Wars, um, but that's the closest thing I had to becoming, as a young kid, interested in science at all. Um, I wasn't even really aware of it. I didn't really know what science was. I, at some point, got really interested in biology and particularly genetics and psychology. Um, probably sort of from age 14, 15 onwards. I worked with people that had quite extreme learning disorders, things like autism or Down syndrome. Um, and I became interested as, as, to, as to why they had those illnesses, if you want to call them illnesses, or, le or, or learning difficulties. Um, and what were the causes, the genetic causes, environmental causes, what that meant for them psychologically. Um, and quite naively, I thought, by doing biology, I could understand that better. As it turns out, I'm not working on anything related to that right now, but that, I think that was the original motivation, looking back around age 16, 17. Okay, so if someone asks me that down the pub, or when I'm out, I tend to just say I work in a lab at the university, um, simply because if you say to someone, oh, I'm a research fellow, or um, I am a molecular biologist, or a molecular geneticist, or a de de developmental biologist, people look at you and go, okay, end of conversation. Um, and having had that experience maybe one or two times, I decided that that's not really a, a way to sort of move forward. So if someone asks me, what do you do? I say, I say work in a lab, in a university, and if they take it further than that, then I'll go into more detail. But that's pretty much all I say. I let them assume what they want after that. All right, well, and I some people, go, some people, detail, some people ask for more detail. So if someone wants more detail, I say, well, actually, I work um, um, on questions concerning stem cells at the moment. Um, and I work with a group of people um, who all have a similar interest. And we actually work with a small invertebrate worm, um, which is a little flatworm. Um, and the interesting thing about it is you can cut lots of little pieces and each piece will make a whole new worm. Um, and that process is called regeneration. And the reason the animal can do this so well is because it's chock full of stem cells. Um, and if they're still interested, I start trying to explain how we do that and the things we can do, that we can knock out particular genes and see the effect that has on the regeneration process. We can look and see where these genes are expressed in the sense that where they're doing what they're doing in the animal. And just start to understand how they the stem cells orchestrate, the stem cells, the animal orchestrate this process. Um, and at that point, I've lost 99.9% .9 of people. I was hired just over two years ago, officially, as an RCUK research fellow, which is, um, is a research council of the United Kingdom research fellow. Um, and it's a scheme funded by the research councils to make more, to fund more young scientists into independent positions where they can run groups and run labs. I think there was a feeling that there was, there was a lack of that happening in the UK or the process was too slow. Um, um, so I applied for that job um, when I was in the US um, and among other things I decided I wanted to come back to the UK and this is essentially the best offer for me because it gave me my independence, gave me a chance to do what I wanted to do, um, gave me kind of some basic facilities and money to start things rolling in terms of my research program that I wanted to sort of start. Um, which was unusual because I'm actually working on something I never worked on before I started the lab. Uh, I used to work on different stuff. Well, for me, it means um, not having a boss, I think is the main thing, and being independent. So I can make decisions about the research that I want to do um, and only have to answer to the people that fund me, essentially. And it means I can build a team of people to work with, so I can choose which uh, other scientists to work with, so I can hire students and postdoctoral workers that will work in a team with me that I'm happy with, comfortable with, who I think make a good team together. Because um, part of being a scientist for me is actually enjoying the day-to-day -day of actually being in the lab. That's something that I think is one of the reasons I stayed in science after my first degree was I had some good experiences of camaraderie and just getting this feeling of teamwork and being able to do things together and move forward together as a team, um, which I wasn't sure I'd get in other occupations as much. So right now, um, on day to day, the best parts of my job is when I see people in the lab, my students or other people working with me, progress and overcome difficulties um, and work as a team and do really well. Um, and I guess the kind of the, the output of that is good data. So you see people doing experiments and after a long time they've been working really hard and their experiment really works and they get really excited and they can start to see what it all means and that it's important 
and um, seeing them get the same kind of buzz out of it that I got as a PhD student. Um, that's been happening a lot in the last two or three months because the lab's very new and young and so I have a lot of uh, first and second year PhD students and postdocs who are just starting out. And so we've been discovering a lot of cool stuff um, pretty quickly and that's been really exciting. So part of that is the discovery, but for me now it's more seeing other people go through that process and the sort of the excitement on their faces. I share in that excitement, but because a lot of the time I'm not doing the work myself, I don't get quite the same buzz I used to get, which was I found this out and I'm the first person to know this and I'm really excited. I could have experienced that vicariously now through the students um, and that's really nice. I mean, that's the best thing right now. That's a really good question. Uh, no, I don't. and I never really have. Um, I just, I, so people say to me, so are you going to, career-wise, are you going to like write this fellowship and become this level and you're going to become a, a whatever, like a senior lecturer and a professor and you could do that and I'm just like, I have no idea. I think I always, when I speak to people who aren't scientific, have no scientific background at all, um, I tend to just keep it simple and, and sort of, and in a kind of mercenary way, just sell them the wow factor of the work I do, which is very easy because of the animal we work with. Um, it's not difficult at all. Um, and then I sort of judge, gauge the level of interest, like are they people that know a little bit about science, do they want to know more? Um, but I tend not to go into any detail or try and bore them with exactly how everything works and how we do things. <laughs> Stereotypical scientist. Um, oh, it depends where you are in the world too. Different cultures are very different. Um, I've experienced um, different lab cultures in the UK and Spain and other parts of Europe and the US and there's trends but Every scientist seems to me like anyone else you pick off the street, they're all very different. Um, I think put on the spot, some scientists will revert to type. If you say to someone, oh, you're a scientist, they might, you know, come across in the way they're expected to. It might be quite dry, it might be quite geeky, focused, um, maybe a little bit irreverent about everything else apart from what they're doing. Um, almost childlike, almost, in that sense. Um, I don't think I'm a typical scientist at all, mainly because of my attitude towards it and maybe my childhood and things that, you know, things that, the way I grew up was, wasn't in a typical academic household or anything, you know. Um, so because the stereotypical scientists, I, I think they do exist, but I don't think they're the majority. I think they're the minority. I'm sure if you walked up and down the corridor, there'd be a couple, I'd probably get in trouble for saying that. Um, but uh, no, I'm not a typical scientist at all. What else do I do in my spare time? Uh, I go out with go my friends. Um, music's a big part of my life. Not playing music or performing music, but dance music. So jungle, drum and bass, I've been listening to since I was 16. So that's like half my life. Um, hip hop, um, any music is important to me. So any kind of live gig, I'll try and get out to it if it's close and I can get out quickly. Um, uh, what else? I work at Oxfam on Saturdays. We, we started doing that. I've been doing that for like six, seven months. I used to do other things, but but this is really convenient because I can just go and do a, a vol volunteer shift in Oxfam Bookshop and that's, that's quite fun. And it sort of takes me away from thinking about science all the time and gets, puts me in a different environment, different types of people. So that's quite positive, I think. God, it's a tough one. Um, I'd like to say I would, I would want to be a scientist, but I can't. I think um, there's lots of things I could do. Um, I'd like to be a writer. Um, I'd like to have tried um, being a footballer or any kind of sportsman, of course. I'd you know, those are things that are important to me. Um, um, gosh, what else would I have done? Uh, I could have tried being a lawyer or a doctor, although I don't like blood, so the, doc the doctoring would have been a problem there. Um, yeah, anything. I'm not really, I'm not really sure. I don't think there's anything, I, anything kind of that you would say was academic and inclined that I wouldn't want to do. I think I definitely enjoy going to university and studying. So something along those lines I think would have been fine. 